So today we're going to be replacing the keyboard on this Precision 7560. I'll open it up so you can see. If it opens up, you will see that my client has broken the backspace key on the keyboard. So we'll be replacing the whole keyboard. So before opening up the computer to take off the keyboard, you need to look at the computer and make sure your client didn't leave anything plugged into it, any SD cards or anything whatsoever. And as you can see, nothing is plugged into it. Here's the SD card slot, and it is empty as you can see. And so we're going to go over to the back cover. And looking around at the back cover, you will see that there are nine Phillips head screws. Three along the one edge, three along each this edge, and then one in the middle. So we're going to take our Phillips head screwdriver and move it. I'll take a prying tool and work my way around the edge until I get an opening on the back cover. And it should be an easy pop off on the clamshell. And we're going to set it off here to the side. So we'll take a minute and glance at the inside of this laptop. And as you can see, my client has already replaced this factory SSD with a heatsink SSD and over here we have the DDR4 memory slots for the RAM. So the next step, next step to get into the keyboard is going to be replace, just to remove the battery and the battery has three M2 screws on it that need to be removed first. So we're going to take these off. Set them to the side. connector and just lift up. And we're going to set it to the sides. So now we got to take these connectors off that are directly connected to the keyboard right here. This is up underneath the battery. I like to take the little prying tool and pop the clamp up and pull it out that way because my fingers are kind of big and I have a hard time gripping it. Now that's done, we're going to flip it over and go at it from the other side. So first we've got to take the lattice around the keyboard off. And again, it's a simple, take your little pry tool, find the clamps that are usually toward the corners of the, of the lattice, pop them off, and then once you get a couple of them, the rest should pop out easily. And we're going to set this to the side. Now the keyboard itself has seven M2 screws on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm inclined here is missing a couple of them, but we're still gonna go through the process. To remove the keyboard, we're going to lift back and up. If you have a hard time getting a grip on it, you can use your prying tool again. But go very, very gently on it. And just like the lattice, once you get one side started, the other side is usually pretty simple to come up as well. And there's the keyboard. Set the damaged one to the side. And we'll pull the brand new one out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work this little strip that connects underneath the battery down into the panel first. Once I get that most of the way in, I'm then going to turn it, tilt it, and get the edge closest to the screen into its slots first. And finish working the strip back down because it's coming back up. And then it should pop into place relatively easily. 
then it's just a matter of going backwards through the process of putting the screws in to the keyboard itself and then the lattice. And as you can see, we can see our connector strip for the keyboard and then our connector strip for the palm rest touchpad in this case. We'll make sure those are securely connected. For anybody that's new to hardware, those little strips have a line on them where the clamp it goes, it connects them in place, should line up there. So once those are in place, we will go and get the battery. We'll put it back in place and make sure that this end fits just fits. You want to put this in left angled in first and then back end set down. Sometimes this end will get caught by the edge. And the caps lock key lit up and it indicating that the keyboard is securely connected. I want it going up and open the text document so I can make sure that everything's typing correctly. And I'm going to write some random string of character words. And of course, test the backspace keys and so the name one. Hit enter a couple times and it looks like everything works as it should. So as you can see, as a fairly easy install, there are some models of precisions that the keyboard is a lot harder to get to. You have to remove a whole lot of lines before you can get to it. Whenever you're considering doing this for a client, I suggest you go to the website first and look up the user manual for it, so our service manual for it, so you can see exactly what's involved in the process. Thank you, everybody. Hope you can join me again next time.